Legendaries do as well as we head into Champion Select for game number four. As once again, the bands are looking extraordinarily similar. So Endless, of course, yeah, maybe feeling a little bit like the laning phase, everything early on is a little bit more comfortable, whereas Tron Tron P able to make it count when it counts in the late, late game as Vladimir does get the ban. It's GT get rid of it. Alistair once again going to go as Braum going to be priority picked. Looks like City, if he wants to go back to the engage, going to have to look deep into the champion pool. Now GT to make their choices. Means the first game that Hecarim will be available. Which one has played it? Uh, we did mention, I mean, it's been nerfed a little bit. Yep. Uh, no Shen on the board means that it's not going to be delivering anyone to the back line, but it is still quite a potent jungler on the current patch. Well, Wushan can now go towards it if he wants to. But I don't think there was anything wrong in the Rek'Sai. You brought that one up yourself during the game. He's looked pretty good. Was still able to get stuff done, especially in the early game last time. Might want to stick to it. It's Gim Goon, you can see. A lot of consideration in his face. Jin was banned last game, now hovered here from Wushong. We'll see where the Pentacue heads towards it. Oh man, this would be cool. No, Not going to happen. Yeah, I know. Wishful thinking. But it's a powerful bottom lane if they decide to lock in the Jin Thrash. It is. It's an incredible bottom lane and gives a lot of utility. It means you can pack the rest of your lineup with a lot of damage. See whether we get a rumble or something out of the top lane. Yeah. Um, to really be able to take over the rest of the map. So this is the change that we like to see if your back is against the ropes. Um, of course, 2-1 down. This is the last game they have potentially to change anything at all. Well, right now Vici, thinking about what they want to pick, I'd expect an AD carry and Dandy's jungler. See whether there's any priorities Easy Hoon wants to head towards. Of course, no Twisted Fate, but does have the rest of his champion pool there. One credit I will give to Easy Hoon, as he just locks something in, <laughs> is he has a very blind pickable champion pool. So it's not incredibly deep, but he plays a lot of control mages and a lot of things that you really don't care what you're playing against. Yeah. Um, so, you know, things like Twisted Fate, things like Lissandra, you know, back in the day, Azir. Victor. Victor. Even if we want to go back further, Ziggs. You really didn't care what you're playing against as a Ziggs. Yeah. Um, so he's had a very blind pickable champion pool for a very long time. Oh, he's going to lock away the Lissandra as far as that pool is concerned. Of course, did start the Proto Belt Lissandra start, I believe. One of the first to do so anyway. Liked it a lot. A lot of extra mobility. Got himself into that backline. Circle of Frost onto five people, things like that. Looked incredible against WE. But Dandy locks away the horse, so the Hecarim there. Up against GT. First time we've seen it let through, and Dandy takes it. Or Lung could potentially take it as well, because Dandy hasn't switched to Ghost, which is slightly the giveaway. But Lung hasn't swapped to Ignite either. Ah, my oh. game's all across the board. I don't even know what's going on anymore. But GT also taking their time. 11 seconds to go. That's an Evelyn hover. Probably not going to happen as the Nah being thought about there for Gimagoon towards the top side of the map. Locked in as well. And that is the Eve. So Wushang has been watching some clear love potentially. Potentially, I mean, that is a great team fighting team already put together. Um, now with Hecarim's slightly weaker early game, maybe they feel that they can nurse the Eve through it. Yeah. Get it to level 6, start opening up some huge flank potentials, using Pentacue's Jin to very much set up some team fights. So much damage out of the lineup, already out of game talents. Well, I mean, if these are going to be the lock-ins for Vici, that's so much damage out of their lineup as well, coming from four sources. Endless thinking about the Ash, the Mustache lane. Pretty dominating. But it is up against the Jin Thresh, which can get all of its work done as well. Could see some fireworks down there. As long thinking about what he wants to take into the Nar, and the Rumble could be an option. They'd have a lot of early teamfight pressure. Lissandra Nar has been very popular. And for good reason as well. I mean, that amount of zone control and area domination that you can have with the Equalizer in the Frozen Tomb. I also really like Nara into Rumble. I mean, you can go early door and shield. Uh, it stops a lot of his harass. And then Rumble pushes incredibly well. And it's always something that Nara has kind of struggled with. I mean, he has a boomerang for a little bit of AoE. But um, ap apart from that, doesn't really deal with being pushed into all that well. Um, is quite prone to ganks and dives if you're able to catch him in the mini NAR form. So see whether they're able to capitalize on what is a pretty volatile matchup, but one that Rumble can definitely win.
Well, we'll see whether Lung can make it work here against Gimgoon. We've seen some up and down performances from Gimgoon's Nar. He's played it a lot. It's his second most played champion so far. Possibly third, given the fact that he's had a couple of games. Nah, still second. I mean, he's still Ten second. on Echo now and six on the Nar. So all right, that's, all that's right. true. That's true. Just has a first rotation uh, top laner that he does like to play a heck of a lot more. But Wushang, first time that we've seen him on the Evelyn. We'll see whether he's going to be able to make the difference. Yeah, that's an aggressive pick. I mean, that means that it's all about the skirmishing. People will remember, I guess, the MSI performance probably most famously, but Clearlove's been doing it for a very long time. Yeah. You know, making your team engage onto objectives like the dragon, like turrets, and then being able to find the key flanks and uh, blow up a backline member. It's a difficult champion to pull off. We'll see if he can do it. We certainly will. As coaches shake hands, let's get into game number four between GT and Vici. Thank you very much, Pentaq, and here we are onto the rift for game number four and what could be the final game if Vici can close this one out. And what better way to celebrate than with a first Dragon Infernal to start this one off. And Dandy back on his horse. And you know, both teams, I think, will love the fact that there is a first Infernal Drake up. I mean, Jin at level six does like to be able to open up with the ultimate for oh, that yeah. utility. You're against a Nar Victor Evelyn. That's a lot of AoE control, but at the same time, they're across the rift from a Hecarim and Rumble, Lissandra. Um, so and Ash. Could see some fireworks. Yeah, there is so much level 6 that could happen from both of these teams. There's Lung and Dandy. I believe we're both seen by that ward that was chucked down. As Yeah, Rumble is just obnoxious. As Gim Gim throws out a boomerang, and Dandy says, Alright, well, I'm not going to head into that jungle, and everything is going to be fine. Was just joking. Gimgun starting uh, Dorian's Blade. I talk about this a lot, but I haven't been on the casting desk for a while, so I'm going to talk about it again. Yeah, I prefer uh, Nars to go with Dorian's Shield. When you auto attack for your harass, you want to get the third proc, you take a lot of minion aggro. Dorian's Shield helps out a lot with that. Yeah. Being able to keep you topped up nicely. Also a little bit more defensive. Realistically, you don't kill that many people as Nars. Uh, <laughs> so the Blade, it's a little confusing to me. Um, however, we do see majority of Nars players got, so maybe they know something I don't. Yeah, Aaron, they're... on the other hand, he likes shield. Yeah, I actually quite like the, the shield idea as well. What was the fact that if you have a decently sized minion wave, that eight damage mitigated is a large amount of damage mitigated. Certainly is. Uh, disaster has struck. Lung has just taken a little camp oh, no. away from Dandy. So we'll see whether that slows him down or you know, means that he's not as healthy because he only has the Q available right now. Or whether it was something that he meant to do that so was the Rumble could get an early lead. He kind of turned and then stutter stepped it, and it looked pretty accidental from where oh. I was sitting. So, unfortunate. Okay, I was going to give them the benefit of the doubt for that one. I never do that. <laughs> I'm aware. Uh, Easy Hoon gets himself a Thunderlord's proc, but Republic winning out on that trade for the moment. Historically, victors have done pretty well into this matchup. Caveman throws down the Winter's Bite just to get some CS, and you can see the Jin Thresh doing a lot of work so far. That this is what I was talking about. It's very easy for Rumble to push in to champions on the current patch. Danny seems okay. Yeah, seems fine. I mean, you can actually melee kite a lot of camps on Hecarim. That's why you do things like uh, Krugs, Wolves, and Red Buff on Hecarim, as opposed to like Raptors and Gromp, who can hit you from range. Because uh, with the helicopter spinning up nicely, you can definitely kite them around to keep a little bit more health available. At the moment, though, you're right. I mean, we were talking about the fact that the early clear of Hecarim a little bit more dangerous, but has looked absolutely fine. I'm looking to grab this Rift Scuttler as well, which doesn't fight back at all. I like that. You can certainly kite that one. He kites you. Rift Scuttler, <laughs> best Juker League of Legends. Oh, yeah. Hardest thing to hit with a skill shot on the map. 
However, he has once again guessed Wufong's jungling path here. And he's going around the... Ooh. Oh, wow. Okay. So not going to spot him. Throws a ward onto this uh, Krug cam. If he had it just stuck his head in there, you would have seen him. And now he's being stalked. He doesn't know that the Evelyn is behind him. Oh, well, Wushong as well. Looking towards the top side, and Lung doesn't know where he is as well. Here we go. Yeah, it comes out. You can see Red Buff slowing down. Lung has to teleport. teleport. There's, there's a really good harpoon to land the first time. Doesn't get the second. Wushong's in now, trouble. Yeah, Dandy makes his way in. Good knockback. And there's the flash for the Circle of Frost. Gim Goon in trouble as well. But Vici say, I'll take double buffs on my mid laner. See you later. Fantastic use of the teleport out of Easy Hoon there. We already said, you know, he's a good Lissandra getting in the position to make it count. Although Caveman now in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, good hook. Deadly Flourish dodged by Caveman though. Nice footwork. Vici, take this control back in the bottom lane. And even out the farm as well, which is very important. There's a stand behind me actually. Looks for Pentacue. But good play. Caveman in trouble as the Concussive Blows lands. And at least Endless able to answer nicely here in this lane, but Caveman has to be careful. Yeah, they trade the, I guess, health of Pentacue for the health of Caveman. Generally, supports do get the advantage because they get to run four, three or four potions at the start of the game. Uh, and, you know, going to be able to use the support item to be able to get some health back as well with the Targons. Yep. Well, Easy Hoon. Proto Belt start once again as the Hextech Revolver is completed. Big item purchase as well. 8 CS behind, but that first blood easily going to make up for that loss. Republic wanting to wait for that first hex core. We're going to get double actually out because you can see that Lung going towards a double amp term as well. Oh, double dash. Double dash cannon. Not and it exactly is a my lot favorite of, Mario Kart. It is a lot of... <laughs> wow. <laughs> it is a lot of uh, surprising burst damage at the start of the game. I yep. mean, it scales pretty well also. But uh, the fact that at level 6, when they go towards these first big fights, that is going to be pretty noteworthy. Yeah, as well as um, wave clear in a pinch at the same time. So, well, Sandra's hop used to be a huge thing. Uh, 957 still thinks it is a huge thing, but most of the league just accepts that it's a mid laner, mid -laner now. Mm -hmm. uh, but Rumble does something similar, where he can actually shove out top lane with his good wave clear, walk into the Raptor pit on blue side, and then just drop an equalizer on the mid laner. Especially if there is follow up damage out of somewhere like Alessandra uh, and Lockdown. It's always been a kind of cool combo as they're actually looking for Gim Goon again because he is only level 6. Equalizer can come down. Yeah, equalizer is going to come down there as well. Frozen Tomb comes in, looks all too easy as Dandy turns up and says, Oh, I guess you guys don't need me. But I was here for moral support. He certainly was. Wushong may be looking for a turn kill here, although it is still an overheatable. Rumble, so you don't want to really tango with that guy. I like the fact that Dandy stuck around there as well, just in case the Evelyn was going to come in. See Vici's bottom lane playing back, not I wanting to provide a pressure point. I also like the fact that, you know, the kills are going over to Easy Hoon because he's the one that's shoving out his lane and leaving. And at the end of the day, the Victor's trying to punish him with CS, so the fact that Easy Hoon's getting the kills instead definitely makes it a worthwhile trade in Republic. He's being incredibly selfish in how he's playing the map. Sure, he's going to be about... 10 to 12 CS up, but when there's two kills on the enemy mid laner, it's not a great thing. Yeah. Well, at least blue buff timer is going to come up here for Wushong as he grabs it. Caveman, very, very deep here against City and Pentacue, and may actually die for it as the exhaust comes down. Good heal as Caveman flashes, has to get the heal at the same time, but Pentacue wants to find touch. more, doesn't find it, but the flash from Endless, can he get in there? Picks up the kill. Minions help him out at the same time, and Vici, that was close, but they got it. And they're able to go aggressive, turn it around. Caveman nearly dies there, but we'll be able to stroll that one out. And, you know, I thought Deathwise Touch might be enough, but not high enough level as... Yeah, that's a tilter. Yeah, that uh, was unfortunate. However, picking up the kill, that's a good news story. Yeah. Now the minion wave has to go over to City as well, so Pentacue has now a BF sword. So that is good, but it's going to be answered as Wushong looks for the kill in the mid lane. Easy Hoon just gets out with a claw. It's not quite enough to take down the Lissandra. Absorbs both ultimates as well, Atlas. So huge victory for Easy Hoon there, sure. Once again, he's behind 20 CS, acknowledging that fact, but he has made two crucial roams towards the top side of the map. And now they actually want to see if they can get the victor. Yeah, I think that's a little bit risky. He's got Onslaught of Shadows. Easy Hoon wants to pick up this wave before he heads back home. Proto Belt will probably be ready by the time he gets over there. Good ward by Dandy to spot out exactly where Republic is. 
And he's who gets himself that free back. So 1,600 gold when he goes home. And that should be the proto belt completed. And you can see what we're talking about. I mean, he's down 23 CS. He's up in gold. I mean, it just doesn't matter because of the two yeah. kills. And at the same time, top lane, 30 CS in advantage for the Rumble. I mean, I said it's a good lane, and it can be a good lane. It shouldn't be this good. <laughs> uh, I agree, Rumble. Uh, yeah. He it's is a very vocal skip. So vocal. As uh, Dandy wanders casually over a pink ward and a sight ward on a very projected trip to this red buff. Yeah, I think everyone knows where he is now, but there still is no counterplay to it because he has just a row a little bit too early. Um, be able to pick that one up. You see that uh, one more time, uh, we've got a Dark Seal picked up by a jungler this time. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Wishung will get a little bit more health back from his refillable potion, though, so that's good news. Heads into the mid lane, gets himself a little bit of extra experience on his way past, but Easy Hoon. Once again, looking for the Nar. Meganar will wear off relatively soon as Gimgoon has to be so careful. He's got his flash, but Lung looking to get behind this turret. He's dead. In goes the ghost. Dandy's looking for it. Arrow flies through, doesn't find the target, but it doesn't matter. Look at him go. The poor little Nar. He's getting picked on. Vici are just big bullies on the map right now. Yeah, they certainly are. They've got double teleport available as well. So is there really any counterplay? Because that is no ultimates burnt. This actually might be an overcommit out of game talents. Yeah, you can see GT are actually going to go back. They're not going to start off that dragon. And you knew that Vici were holding their fingers over those teleport buttons. And Easy Hoon just doesn't really care about getting farm. It's not what he's about this game. No, certainly not. Down by 27. There's two upgrades on the hex core there for Republic. But what does Victor do? He farms really well. What does Lissandra do? Locks down a single target and gets your kills across the map. And he's doing exactly that. And it's 4-0 to zero in favor of Vici. And you also have to look at, I mean, what are the win conditions for GT? It's these big team fights where they need Gimgoon to be able to frontline and absorb a lot of the incidental damage. Whoa! As, whoa! Yeah, in goes Dandy. And the Lissandra's going to follow up as well. Flash comes out of Wushang, does have the W, used it to get the extra movement speed. But there's the blind equalizer! Wushang is going to melt from most of it. The style points for the dash cannon finish. That's a 1-0-3 rumble. Yeah, it certainly is. And, you know, things are just going bad to worse right now. I mean, G2, they had a very rough game one. Game two, peg it back. But this time around, it looks like it's going to be another one-sided affair. But it's all orchestrated from pretty fantastic Vici play. Understanding what they want to achieve, what they can sacrifice and capitalizing where they can. Well, I'm just going to repeat one more time. I mean, you can't stand the lane right now. Sure, we mean for the first six minutes. If Gimgoon is this far ahead, just march the Jin top lane. See what you can get done. I mean, stop staying in these 1v1, 2v2 matchups where you're just losing across the board. Yeah. Uh, because there really is no answer anymore uh, to how big Lung is in this top side of the map. Dandy just went back and finished an outright Sheen as well. So he's going towards that Trinity Force. Was wondering, of course, Dandy has been the one to mix it up. Sometimes goes the full tank Hecarim build. This time, understands that the snowball is on. He's ready to take people down. I mean, it's 3,000 gold, 12 minutes in. No turrets yet to fall. And they haven't even really turned their eyes towards dragons. As soon as the objective starts and this team really does come online, it's going to be even more difficult to really go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Do you feel as well like Vici probably want to wait for a counter towards a dragon take as well with their double teleport? The fact that they can get there in a nick of time? Yeah, potentially they just keep camping top lane. I mean, Gimgoon still has no magic resistance. Had to go double Dorans in his build as well. So, uh, yeah, you would think that there is pretty easy telegraph plays to be made on the top side of the map. However, with Evelyn, it's always interesting to see if you can get creative in your uh, ganking path. Yep. All right, now City looking to clear out some vision. Volley goes across there from Endless. Good flayback, but City doesn't find the hook as Caveman. Jitters a little bit, throws out some giggles. Wushang level 8, now looking for that ultimate towards the bottom side. No Runic Echoes just yet. One more time, top side of the map. Gingoon is in huge trouble. Yeah, Equalizer comes in. The bounce does get him out. And Dandy says, no, I want the Krugs, man. Yeah, That's very important. good bounce. Utilized there, but once again, he's just shoved off a creep wave. Top lane turret looks like it's probably going to fall down relatively soon. He's half the CS. That is ridiculous. 
And first turret blood possibly to go over to Long as well, solo. That is only going to make matters worse here for Gimgoon. That first structure bonus is such a large amount of gold. Yeah, 650, I mean, that's massive, especially for such a gold efficient uh, oh. top laner like Rumble. Yeah. I mean, he's set. <laughs> I've seen Myron win games at the moment with only those two items. Well, there's the dash cannon used onto Republic. They want to take him down as well. Frozen Tomb comes through. Easy Hoon grabs that. Exhaust save for Wuxiang. And he's going to stack up the stun. City's going to get knocked up. Easy Hoon close to death, but the double kill for Dandy's in there. Gimgoon hops over the top, grabs oh, one, no. the flash miss from Endless. That's a nightmare scenario, but they're still 8-1, and one. ain't going to be too worried. 5,000 gold now the lead. You just hate to see it. He's got a blood nose, headbutted the wall. That's no good at all. However, as you said, they were able to pick up three kills. They only trade Easy Hoon's life. They're going to be able to pick up what is a blue buff on the bottom side of the map, and jungle control just further in favor of this Vici lineup. I mean, it's all orchestrated by Dandy and Easy Hoon, but the rest of the supporting cast are just there every single time at the moment. Yeah, and I want to know how many buffs Dandy's taken as we see this fight one more time. And you can see that he has to flash away. I mean, he tries to insta-cleanse. There's just too much follow-up damage. And Gimboon kind of teleports in, gets stunned, and he's like, but what else can I even really do? I mean, I'll jump in, pick up a kill. That's all. Yeah. Didn't have many options. And look, goes back, grabs himself a ruby crystal. Lung goes back, needlessly large rod. And, and ruby boots crystal. too. And I mean, boots too. Yeah. That is so much money spawn. It certainly is. I mean, he was able to pick up 650 gold from the turret. Also had a couple of assists top lane that he was just sitting on. And the pressure doesn't go away. I mean, there's no real response. At the moment, you can see Easy Hoon just dodging out of the way. The Republic here in the mid lane, avoiding that harassment. Very comfortable. Fiendish Codex now completed. 30% CDR. As well as some magic resist for him, as Dandy was wandering over the top of a ward. In goes Easy Hoon. Nice circle of frost as the gravity field's there, but Easy Hoon takes that one down with the dash cannon. Wushong's just going to be fodder as he gets destroyed. There are kills everywhere as Lung also just burns down Gimgur, and you can see the frustration in his face. GT. It's looking like the screws are turning and they just don't have a way to turn them around. And Republic Head is still in hands. I mean, you hate to see it, the young man. You've had such a good season so far, Game Talents. I mean, Sure, Vici have been the better team today and have definitely stepped up their play, but for a team that, you know, was pretty much HYG, M3, mashed together. There were no expectations for uh, Vici, yeah, right? Yeah, they definitely, I mean, this hurts now, but you take a lot, you learn, you grow from it, and you become a better team as time progresses. Especially because their late season trade of players are, does seem to be a move for the future. Yeah. Well... That is going to be Tower falling on the bottom side of the map. Mid lane as well is going to take a lot of damage as Dandy's going to turn up. And that one falls in swift succession. Three turrets now to zero. It's feeling a little bit similar to game number two. Or game number three. Don't quite know. This caveman goes back home, and that's a 9,000 gold lead at 16 and a half minutes. My goodness. Such control out of Vici. Easy Hoon looking so comfortable. Right now... Looking at half health, so he does have to actually respect Republic just a little bit. Still has his dash cannon to get himself out of trouble. No death ray to find too much. Also has a Hecarim heading to his lane. Yeah, in goes Dandy, finds the ultimate, gets the knockback as Republic. Just didn't have enough buttons to do in time. Nice gravity field. Stuns up Easy Hoon, but that Chaos Storm not doing nearly enough damage. And it's just the bait and switch. And you know that Eve was there, was looking to make the play at the same time, but Dandy is just... A little bit too far ahead. There's too much burst damage coming out of the Hecarim Lissandra combo. You understand now why the ga uh, bands were the way they were. They didn't want to give it over. Uh, they fear they had to in game number three. And it's just proving too overwhelming right now for the young team. Yeah. And 4 0 5 now for Dandy as well in this Hecarim. Trinity Force just completed. Looking for a Spectre's Cowl item number two. Wants to avoid the Evelyn and Victor damage to the best of his ability. Of course, Spectre's Cow, fantastic against Eve's oh large goodness. amounts of damage. As Long actually looking to take down Penicu, does so easily. One versus three, City. All he needs is another Flame Spitter, but Easy Hoon grabs it. All too easy is Gimgoon. He gets a wallop, but Long's absolutely fine. And Vici just all land into the party. Republic gets himself over to the side. Doesn't have the Chaos Storm available just yet. Can't even take down Caveman there with the Death Ray. And you can see the frustration on Penticue. I mean, he's like... We had the jump on him. That should have been an easy collapse. However, at this stage of the game, it just is not going to be. Another dive. Easy Hoon on top 
of a gravity field isn't too worried. Frozen Tomb turns it around against Wushong, who flashes out of the way, but is it going to be enough? Yes, it is. As the ultimate does fly through, Curtain Call going to do some work and gets the shutdown. Easy Hoon now running out of the way. Couldn't tank that turret as he gets himself out with the claw. So another turret falls. However, they do pick up the shutdown kill onto Dandy, who's gone back and grabbed himself the outright Trinity Force. So he's quite large at this stage of the game. However, good news is items starting to be piecemealed together by the GT lineup. Yep, perfect hex score there for Republic, which is important, as well as that frozen mallet with Gimgoon towards the top side of the map. You can see Pentacue actually going towards the Essence Reaver instead of the Armor Penetration build here on the Gen. Yeah, I like it. You know that there's going to be lots of squishes and Armor Penetration at the start of the game, very good, but the crit towards the latter stages just cannot be rivaled. Yep. Um, and once again, if they win this game, it's going to be a long one, Atlas. Yeah, We're going exactly. to be here for a while. Uh, it doesn't look likely at this stage because... Uh, this team comp put together by Vici has no difficulty diving. We saw that uh, Game Talents had those, I guess, struggles in the uh, last game. Oh, no. Long dash cannon comes in. That's the rampage for the rumble. He's looking to now steal away this red buff as well. Wushong is not having a good time on Summoner's Rift. No, he certainly isn't. I mean, it's just overflow from other lanes. That really is just the early kill that was able to be picked up in the top lane. And then the repeat ganks. Out of Easy Hoon, I mean, if you are a victor, you don't want to shove up in this matchup because there is too much potential to be, I mean, ganked and counter ganked. Uh, so they chose to be shoved in, and in the end, oh, that Grumps is annoying. Uh, yeah. In the end, it was just Easy Hoon having way too much map presence. Yeah, now finally the first dragon is going to get taken. Dandy just decides that now is the moment. He's got his Barmy Cinder, so it wasn't actually the Spectre Scout looking to finish off his Cinder Hulk for everything else. Next one's going to be that Ocean Drake. He's only adding insult to injury here for Vici as they're pushing up this inner turret on the bottom side. Finally, GT get in there, but City doesn't find the flash play. As he then looks for the help. Good flash out of Endless. Gets himself out of the way as Dandy just cleans up the support. Pentacue gets exhausted, but good flash to get himself out of the way. Caveman's going to get taken down by the Chaos Storm as the Deadly Flourish will be available after this. But no, Curtain Call doesn't quite lock down that kill. Lung turns up in time. The Equalizer in a beautiful position locks down Republic. Dandy, he's very low, but he's still going to survive. And Lung with a Flame Spitter tears apart the Jin. Yeah, they are just way too far ahead. I mean, you saw that maybe a little bit of uh, cheeky play coming out from the Game Talents bottom lane, but they just, you know, there's absolutely nothing they can do. Although now Dandy might... That was Not an odd scenario, as uh, Gimgoon now taking a lot of damage. Endless is able to crit him to death. The exhaust He's comes through. Well. He's most certainly dead. Shutdown comes through for the Evelyn. His tower falls in the mid lane. Easy Hoon able to help take that one down. So one more time. Uh, Vici, you just need to calm down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, play this game out. Oh, look, they all managed to die. That's cute. In unison. Yeah. For no reason. Uh, however, like this is one of those games that it will get away from you if you do not take it seriously. I mean, we've already seen a team struggle to close out. Um, do I think there's going to be similar difficulties? No. But I do think that they need to play to a higher standard than that. Yes. At the moment, 12,000 gold in the lead. 22 minutes into the game. Does feel good. But we saw similar sized lead held by GT, and Vici turned that one around. Right now, GT do have champions that can get pretty despicable in the later stages. Republic on the victor will be able to do a lot of AoE damage and Pentacue able to lock down team members as well as having, you know, probably the largest amount of flat AD out of any other champion in the game. And thus we'll be able to take down his red buff though and Ash no slouch in her own right. And Gimgu now trying to fight Dandy. Ultimate going to be held on to. Hecarim doesn't want to go too deep. So they just need to show a little bit of composure here. I mean, Baron is available. They have a very good Baron team. They are starting to sweep the pit. Uh, this is exactly how VG should be playing. And I mean, they've started it up. There's no real way to approach. Uh, with that, wave clear becomes incredibly difficult. And this should be a rather clinical game to be closed out. Yeah, Baron. Below half health, absolutely nothing GT can do about it. Nor do they even know that it's going on. It was only a matter of time. So they probably assumed, and even this tower is going to survive as Pentacue Arrow flies through. Easy Hoon looking to catch up to the Jin who gets himself into the brush. Takes himself the lantern, gets Maybe himself out. Maybe looking for Easy Hoon now. Call comes in. Can he dodge it? Flashes himself over the wall. Sorry, over the curtain call. And now ults himself up underneath the turret and City's going to die. 
So a little bit of an overreach from City. All of a sudden, Lung has towed up. Maybe he wants to join the party. Lung and everyone else, as Endless is actually going to just face check Republic, gets the auto attacks in there and just picks up the AP carry in the mid lane. 1v1. Yeah, generally you shouldn't be able to do that. If you face check a no. Victor, he should kill you. Yep. Uh, however, is rather far behind and Endless still accelerated, although now Wu Shuang wants a shot. Yeah, Endless not going to survive that one. There's going to be the Raptor camp picked up by Wu Shuang as well, which is definitely good news. Dandy says, I will avenge you, kind sir. As Wu Shuang gets exhausted, throws down a slow, but he's going to get slowed himself. Winter's Bite comes in, Dandy closes the distance, and that is going to be the shutdown to Caveman. Grabs that kill for himself. Certainly does, and they pick up a turret at the same time. I mean, they're still pushing with Baron buff. They're 16,000 gold at the lead. This is 24 minutes in. Uh, GT have done a good job of, I mean, generating some income through some cheeky kills. Um, but it does look like their luck is nearly running out. Well, there's the equalizer as well. City going to burn down to death as well as Republic. He's going to be the next to fall. Easy Hoon dash cannons his way through. Gimgoon gets himself underneath the turret, but Frozen Tomb's up once again. An inhibitor turret's going to fall down. Beachy, take the inhibitor. And there is only Pentaq alive right now. We'll see whether they just keep pushing with this Baron buff. Yeah, I don't think they can still keep pushing. I mean, they can give it a crack. Only 20 minutes in, relatively low death timers. Yep, Pentaq is going to get jumped on by Dandy. A good way to extend a death timer. Oh my goodness, the arrow actually lands. There's no follow-up available, but that was pretty good aim. Deadly Flourish lands on a caveman. Curtain Call comes in, misses the first bullet. Stand behind me, gets himself out of the way as Dandy saves himself. And Deadly, sorry, Death by a Touch would have taken him down if Wushung didn't. And he is still able to lock up that kill. So, that is two dead on the side of Ichi, but they've taken an inhibitor. They certainly have. Only 25 minutes in, 28 kills to 8. I mean, they are very much taking liberties with these games that they otherwise should not. Yes. Uh, I, I think we complimented their decision making and they certainly know how far ahead they are although now Dandy yep, is just going to kill Pentacue. Yep, that was pretty ridiculous as City has to flash out of the way of the volley to avoid getting perma slowed. Hawkshot flies through and Vici still one more. <laughs> they just empowered Recall back home. <laughs> oh. Wishung, I probably wouldn't stop these backs if I were you. Nah, he wants the Ash. I reckon he can get him too. Hey, it's got full health now and an extra BF sword. Yeah, he has ulti though and dash cannon. Trust me, I play a lot of Evelyn. No, I know. Oh. Is that an arrow? Yeah. It's just sails by majestically. Thank you very much for that one, Endless. Hi, wide, not very handsome. Mm-hmm. That is going to be a Lich Bane completed for Easy Hoon as well, so a bit of extra burst damage for the Lissandra. Not exactly a classic item oh, for her, as no, Wishung gets eliminated. Will flash himself to relative safety. Equalizer avoided as well as Easy Hoon dash cannons his way in. Gets the Circle of Frost as well. Will probably die. No, no doesn't just yet. As Pentacue's going to fall to Dandy, who's so tanky. Does so much damage. He's tanking up two turrets. He's going to die for it. But my goodness, the aggression out of Ichi's ridiculous. Wishong eventually picks up the follow-up kill, but he's going to pay for that one with his life. And that's the ace for Vici. And that should be the game. Vici should be able to move on to the quarterfinals. Their date with WE will be secured. It most certainly will. Nexus is now going to fall down. And what a decisive victory. 44 kills in a 27-minute game as the Nexus falls down. It was definitely bloody, but it was mostly Vici that were causing that. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, you could see that they were having a little bit of fun towards the uh, end of that game. Game Talent's able to pick up a couple of return kills when they were overzealous. Yeah. Uh, but Vici looked very much in control of that set from start to finish. Yeah, now Group B team looking incredibly powerful moving into this, our first playoff match. Game Talent's looking like the team that's honestly the seed behind heading into this game. They were, of course, third out of Group A. It does show you the difference between these two groups as Vici take a well-deserved bow, and they're looking well in good position to take out their road here in the, in, in the playoffs. We'll see whether it's going to be enough against WE, like you said. Yeah, but ladders and form are two different things, right? And I yeah. mean, Game Talents, they had a fantastic start to the season. That's why they pretty much guaranteed their third place spot. Uh, and, you know, they did peter off towards the end and they were making roster adjustments. I think that you really do have to acknowledge that even though they were higher on the ladder, Vici definitely came into that set as a favorite to win it. And, uh, you know, we keep mentioning it. Uh, IMA, uh, WE all fell to Vici uh, OMG before they went into this game. Yeah. Um, so they definitely were looking a little bit more prepared. Uh, and it came through in their play. I mean, the fourth place team, sure, but they only needed three games to be able to clean that one up.
Yeah, they most certainly didn't look like they were almost too easy at the same time. Of course, some unfortunate scenarios happened for GT as far as game number two. Unable to close that one out. Would have definitely been heartbreaking. Decided to go for, I guess, riskier, I guess, draft for game number four. Just because it's all on the line. You want to go back to something that could possibly work. Throw a spanner in the works. That was the Evelyn. Didn't quite work out. Dandy's Hecarim looking so dominant in that game. Yeah, but one more time, like it was the map movements that really secured it. I mean, they go for the gank top lane, they overreach, teleport comes in and it's no matter what champion you are in that situation, the teleport secures it. I mean, if it's a LeBlanc with teleport, you still get that solo kill, right? So I do think that, you know, you can credit pick band. They definitely had good pick band Vici, but what impressed me more was the fact that they were really moving around a unit uh, around the map as a unit with a purpose. I mean, you could un always see what they were moving towards and they weren't happy feeding at all. They were just making good, clean, decisive calls. Yeah, and always following up, making sure that they're getting things done, getting themselves around. And I actually want to talk about that because Easy Hoon's Lissandra is probably one of the only champions that he actually does this on. He's never in his lane, always out. Often you see Easy Hoon, he wants to just dominate his lane, get the 1v1 down, win out in farm, create large number disadvantages for his opponent. With his Lissandra, he's all about winning the rest of the map, and it's beautiful to see. 100%. The uh, Lissandra and Twist of Fate. I mean, that's why we yeah. also always say the Twist of Fate uh, ban away from Easy Hoon, because he is very much about creating discrepancies on the top side of the map uh, with that pickup. But we, we said it very early in the season. If Easy Hoon and Danny win, it's still nearly not enough to get VT over the line. If he can transition it either into the bottom or the top lane, then they generally pick up the victory. So uh, it is a very important thing to note that, you know, on the active map carries, it does look easier for Vici to be able to extend that gold advantage early in the game. Yeah, and it's why I was actually talking about the rise as well, because of course, Easy Hoon was a phenomenal rise player before he got slightly changed. Of course, most of his buttons do the same thing, but he now has an ability that moves him and a bunch of his teammates around the map. I feel like it's like a perfect pick for Easy Hoon. Yeah, potentially. I mean, Rise doesn't really do the same thing. He does like weird burst damage now in Windows. I mean, he was more of the machine gun mage that was very yep. much about consistent damage. Now his damage does get very bursty as the game goes on. He's also much better suited to AP, uh, although he still likes some mana in his scaling. But the ulti is a really cool thing. I mean, level 6, it's pretty useless, but level 11, it gets quite fun to play around with where you can take your team. Yeah, and of course, if you can get Dandy into a backline in a team like that, I mean, that sounds absolutely fantastic. So maybe something that Vici are sitting on. We did see the hover of the rise was something that they may have considered or may have just been throwing around, but I would definitely like to see it. And maybe there's even more to be seen from Vici moving into the rest of the playoffs. I agree there's more to see from Vici. I mean, they showed us absolutely nothing today. They just showed us pretty good, clean map movement, honestly. And yeah. we knew that they were capable of that. So yeah, I definitely think that they will have some picks that we are not yet prepared for uh, coming out. I mean, we saw a Twitch and a Cogmore. I mean, the Cogmore was slightly interesting, but we've seen it before out of them. Yeah. The, the ability to play hyperscaling really is fun for Vici because especially when they run these double teleport comps, it's very hard to put the hyperscaling AD carry behind because they have two very good teleport users ready to counter gank at the drop of a dime. Yeah, and they did so very, very effectively at the same time. So fantastic to see out of Vici in that regard. I mean, I guess the other question is the fact that Endless, his two games, incredibly convincing. Sean Sean P, not so much. But we do have an MVP. Let's have a look exactly who managed to pick that one up. And it's Easy Hoon once again in game number four. 12, 2, and 8. His Lissandra was incredible. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, you have a look at the numbers there. 60% kill contribution from the mid lane, especially in such a sloppy game uh, that oh, yeah. it deteriorated. So still quite high. Um, but it's more about like what he was able to do in the earliest stages of the game. I mean, getting into that top lane three, four times, really setting behind Gimgoon, who he said needs to be able to step up and go massive in this game. And of course, teleporting in immediately. Grabs this follow-up kill quite easily. I mean, it was a good harpoon from Long, and in goes Dandy. They just get exactly what they want, and it just sets them up. First blood from there, it just felt like double buffs on Easy Hoon. Everything's absolutely fine, and this was a cute little outplay. I knew they were going to show this play. This is just, this is over time. This is like additional minutes in soccer. You've already lost the game. I mean, yeah. you're shaking hands with your opponents as you're walking off the pitch, and then someone kicks a goal against you. I mean... It feels bad, Atlas. I don't know about showing plays like that. I mean, the yep. first three were really good plays. That one is a little bit, uh, a little bit salt in the wounds. It, it is. So hopefully, uh, GT weren't actually watching that one. I guess an honourable mention has to go to Long because the Rumble play, the fact that he was getting solo one versus three kills towards the middle of that game, the game wasn't completely over at that stage. If we're talking about, you know, the we're already shaking hands and yeah. kicking goals type situation, it was still. 
it, pretty incredible play out of the Rumble. It was set up pretty well for success as well. So, you know, yeah, one point. more time, you know, Lung, he's a very good player. I think that with resources, he's incredibly good. I want to see him play a little bit more resourceless to make sure that he can go with the likes of Mouse. We know that, for example, we know that Mouse can play Gangplank on one end of the spectrum where he needs gold. Yeah. And he also has a very good Maokai. Lung has shown that on things like Rumble, when he gets given gold, he's very, very good at executing. But I still have some questions around, like, you know, if they have to camp out a Deft in the bottom side of the map, how does this guy go? Um, uh, the player that actually stood up a lot for me today was Caveman, and he's continued yeah. to do so across the rest of the split. I think that now that Caveman is playing very, very good League of Legends, uh, Vici are a team that can go deep in the playoffs. Yeah, and it's actually going to be really, really important heading into WE as well, because he's going up against Zero, who is arguably the heart and soul of that team. The glue that holds them together. Yeah, I don't even know if anyone's arguing with you anymore. Uh, Zero is a very <laughs> good support player. I mean, when they beat RNG, he absolutely took it oh, to yeah. the Mata Uzi bottom lane. And I, I, I have so much respect for Zero. He's been to World Finals. I mean, he is an incredible, incredible shot call player. He's a very cerebral player and has the mechanics to back it up. I mean, he's not one of these players that, you know, like he's there for the shot calling. He definitely can make big plays as well. So interested to see if, th if this bottom lane really can try and get on top of each keep them down and exploit what should be a weakness still. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So that's going to be the difference heading into that match because, of course, Mystic has also been making a name for himself, getting himself a lot of MVPs for WE at the same time. You saw him towards the bottom of that list, but, of course, there are some pretty dominant teams here in the LPL at the moment, so you're not expected to necessarily be up there if you're in second position. So it will be interesting to see how Vici actually adapt with their strong top side of the map that we're never really going to have too much of an issue with with dealing with a strong bottom side. Yeah, and that's the interesting thing, right? And I always say this, it's about playing towards your strength whilst trying to capitalize and shore up some weaknesses. And uh, 957, not a liability, but Shea going into playoffs, uh, I don't want to use the word choke, but, you know, was known to fumble yep. uh, going into spring. Didn't have a great performance against the RNG lineup. Was solo killed a couple of times from Xiaohu. But once again, this was Xiaohu in fantastic form. So uh, other members, you know, Condi, Shia, do need to step up uh, out of WE if they're going to have a good performance against what is now a pretty powerful VG lineup. Yeah, I actually believe that this is going to be a rematch as well of uh, our former playoffs as uh, WE were able to actually get ahead. And it was back-to-back -back Karma games from Shia that actually carried them through. Of course, Vici, it was a pick that hadn't actually really established itself in the mid lane, so Vici possibly caught a little bit off guard and maybe won some revenge here. Yeah, WE played really well against Vici. Um, yeah. Split. Uh, I, it was pretty much a wash, like uh, if memory serves correctly, and Xie did have some good games, but once again, he did really fall down against Xiaohu, so Xie, a young player, still has a lot to prove in the LPL. Yeah, he most certainly does, and he's definitely going to have it all cut out for him as well as... Really exciting to note as well the fact that these teams both haven't actually changed moving into this next match. So no roster swaps to come in apart from Xuan Xuan P, but Endless is still around. So it's really cool to note now all of the changes that have potentially come in and the evolution of all of these players because it's what we talk about for WE, but it's happening now for Vici as well. Yeah, it certainly is. And you know, the good thing about Vici is that they are starting to gel very, very well as a team. And the bottom lane now has a very critical role to play as the game progresses. So I do agree that, you know, the evolution of Vici, last split, it was all about WE. I mean, they were a team that came out of nowhere. We didn't really expect them to be. They were eighth place, I think, in uh, spring yeah. last year and then very, very low, like 10th or something. Uh, in summer. So, you know, the fact that they've brought it back to once again being a dominant uh, team in the LPL in China as a region uh, just shows that, you know, this rebuilding structure that the LPL went through was successful. Yeah, well, speaking of rebuilding, of course, we are going to have our next playoff match coming up. And that is going to be a different story here as, of course, I may are taking on Invictus Gaming. IG with the 5-11 and 11 scoreline coming in. That fourth place from Group A scraping through with a bare victory over Newbie to get themselves here. It's going to be a, yeah, a different story against Aime, who are, they were even with Vici as far as scoreline. It's still a nine and seven team. It's very scary. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, IG have their work cut out to going into the next series. Yeah, they do, of course. Let's throw to a break though, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, sorry, throw, throw to some highlights and uh, have a look at exactly how Vici tore apart this game. Yeah, and you know, we saw this Gim Goon able to escape, but really the ship had sailed by that stage. Lissandra just time and time again was able to pick off King members, you know, double kills going across everywhere. And this was a 3v. Yeah, this is the one, one we were talking about. And he got exhausted, and it didn't really seem to matter.
And the rest of his team, of course, turned up. All of Vici actually rotated around for this moment as well. Yeah, 100%. This is what I meant. Vici looked like they were a team that were well and truly on the same page the entire entirety of this uh, best of five. And that's not a compliment we have paid Vici much in the past. Yeah. They have really played with two different halves of the map. And normally it was Dandy throwing his bottom lane a bone, but right now they seem to very much understand exactly what they need to do. Yeah, and I feel like respect for Caveman has really come in through every member of this team because that man is able to hold his own and really contribute to what was already incredibly strong about Vici. One more time, we'll see the overzealous yeah. play from City. I mean, he gets a flay, would have nailed the hook if the damn ultimate was down, but, you know, wasn't to be for the young support player. Yeah, a little bit sad. And uh, unfortunately, we actually saw his missed flash play as well as here's the 1v1, Endless managing to take down Republic as Ash versus Victor, and I feel like that sums up the game. Yeah, 100% when you have a burst mage, you know, that it doesn't miss anything. I mean, he won went for the 100 to 0, just didn't go. Yeah, most certainly did, but now it's time to throw to a break, ladies and gentlemen. When we get back, our matchup, Aimee taking on Invictus Gaming. Don't go anywhere.